1987, the world was introduced to this little blue robot known as Mega Man. This character quickly became a favorite amongst gamers, and a new game was released almost once a year for the following 21 years. Even though he hasn't had an individual game in quite some time, he still shows up as a playable character in other games like Super Smash Bros. and Marvel vs. Capcom. With Mega Man 11 coming later this year, we decided to take a look at one of the weirder Mega Man spin-offs. Today, we jump on the field and play Mega Man Soccer. Released in 1994 by Capcom, Mega Man Soccer was a spin-off to the original series. The game was developed by Sun L and Atelier Double for the Super Nintendo. Sun L has developed games such as Cult Jump, Battle Crusher, and the Crayon Shinshan series. Although they developed several games for Nintendo consoles between 1991 and 1995, their trail ends there. We tried to look into more information about this company, but it seems like they fell off the face of the earth and didn't leave much information behind. Atelier Double has developed Snowboard Racer 2, Street Skater, and the Ranma 1 half games. Unlike Sun L, Atelier Double has more of a history you can find, though the information was still limited. It might seem weird that Capcom wasn't the developer for this game, seeing as they handled just about every single other Mega Man game prior to this release. But within the same year came Mega Man 5 and Mega Man The Wily Wars, both developed by Minakuchi Engineering. An easy assumption would be that Capcom was too busy with Mega Man 7, which was released the following year, to take on these other games. Mega Man Soccer was announced during an interview with the Game Players magazine a year before release. And that's pretty much all we got in terms of information regarding the game. Even in the months leading up to the Japanese release, little was known about what this game was going to be like. It seems like Capcom may have wanted this game to fly under the radar, knowing that it was a very risky game to make, but the lack of promotion really can't prove otherwise. After release, several features were found on the ROM that were left out of the game. These features include allowing four players to play at once, a closing credit scene, and the ability to play as Dr. Wily. In today's age of gaming, unused code is found all the time which often hints towards DLC that may be coming down the road, or new features that will show up once a patch is released. However, with this we can't quite figure out why they would take these features out of the game, since there was nothing really that complex about them. When we started this game, we really didn't expect there to be any kind of story, but to our surprise, there actually was. The game takes place a few months after Mega Man defeats Dr. Kosak in Mega Man 4. While Mega Man, Roll, and Dr. Light are watching a soccer game on TV, fire bursts onto the field and fills the stadium with smoke. When everything clears, the crowd and TV spectators see that the players have been replaced by robots. Dr. Light quickly recognizes the robots to be that of Dr. Wily and knew he was up to his old tricks again. Dr. Light then modifies Mega Man to go onto the soccer field and defeat the enemy in a soccer match. Graphically, there's nothing too special to talk about here. All of the sprites look pretty much exactly how you would expect, and all of the fields are very basic. It's easy to see that there wasn't a lot of work put into the fields, since the only big difference are the colors on the turf and walls. However, the music is actually very good. If you've ever played a Mega Man game before, you'll know that the music is very iconic. Out of most things that this game got wrong, the music feels natural for a Mega Man game and this does not go unnoticed. There is a downside though, and that would be the sound effects. Kicking the ball makes a loud thud, and you'll constantly hear players sliding around to try and steal the ball, which sounds like compressed air being blown out. For some reason, the sliding sound is often used when the player jumps for the ball as well. Seeing as they're robots playing soccer, we can give them the excuse as to why these sounds would be there, but the volume and the lack of variety in sound effects takes away from the music. Obviously you can turn down these sounds in the options, but it would have been a lot better if they had added something more to the game so it wouldn't be so intrusive. There are four different game modes to choose from at the start. Exhibition, Capcom Championship, Tournament, and League. All of these are pretty self-explanatory, with Capcom Championship being the quote-unquote story mode. Much like a lot of the games we cover, we can use this term very loosely since there's never any sort of story shown or explained in the game other than the beginning cutscene. Your goal is pretty much like every other Mega Man game out there, defeat each of the different bosses until you make it to Dr. Wily. Throughout the gameplay you can perform special types of kicks. These range from Mega Man's Rockbuster shot to Cutman's Rolling Cutter shot. Aside from the special kicks, the game is actually very slow. Your characters move at a decent pace until they get the ball, 
and then they slow down significantly. Lobbing the ball makes it move as if it's in slow motion, and shooting or passing the ball feels exactly the same way. This makes it really easy for you or the opponent to steal the ball, which results in a lot of back and forth gameplay before anyone makes an attempt at getting a goal. Each team is allowed to do two special kicks per game, and these can be used to destroy enemies or give you an instant goal. This pretty much always guarantees you two points per game, since scoring on your own is an extremely difficult task. One weird thing to see is how many Mega Mans are on the screen at once. There's really no explanation as to why there's so many duplicates on the field, other than the fact that they needed to fill the field with players. It would be easier to accept if you played as Mega Man and there were other random blue robots that helped you. Defeating a boss will then cause them to join your team and become a playable character. This gives the ability to customize your team however you see fit, and constantly mess around with different combinations to see what works. After defeating a boss, you'll be presented with the password screen, which has to be by far the most complicated password system we've ever seen. Writing this password down would take just as much time as playing an actual f***ing match. Once you get through all of the bosses, you'll finally make it to Dr. Wily, which then turns into the same type of gameplay you've gone through from the other bosses. The only difference in the Dr. Wily match is that none of the special kicks can get you a goal. Wily's goalie will stop the special kick every single time. This makes the final match a tad more difficult, but there's nothing else that really changes. If you can make it past the final boss, you're presented with one of our favorite things about this game. The title screen. That's right, there's absolutely no ending at all. You're shown the final score and taken right back to where you started with absolutely no resolution to the quote unquote story. This brings up the hidden features we mentioned earlier. Using a game genie, you can actually pull up the hidden ending you should have gotten in the game. The championship mode ending shows Dr. Wily surrendering to Mega Man, only to run away as everything starts to collapse. The rubble covers Mega Man, and we see Proto Man out over an ocean and teleporting away. The tournament mode ending shows Mega Man celebrating in the middle of the field where flowers and a trophy are brought to him. This is then followed up with the same Proto Man scene. The lack of an ending makes all of your hard work meaningless. After working hard to come up with a strategy that works, and grinding through all of these levels, being put back at the title screen means that you played this game for nothing, and it's not fun enough to make it worth it. Just like in Michael Jordan, Chaos in the Windy City, we didn't really expect a lot going into this game. After playing it for a bit, we realized that it met our expectations on what a Mega Man soccer title could be. While reviews for this game seem almost consistently low, there are a few people out there who actually found it to be quite entertaining. This goes to show that a review is just someone's personal opinion that has to be taken with a grain of salt, just like with everything we do on this channel. Overall, we found this game to be extremely slow with its lackluster gameplay and repetition. It truly feels like this game was just a test run to see how well a Mega Man sports title could be. And maybe a second title could have been made if the game sold enough. There's a reason this game has never been remastered, re-released, or even put on the virtual console and that's because this game doesn't hold up in any sense of the word. We feel that if there were more features, and that the gameplay was tuned a little bit better, then maybe it could have stood a chance at holding up. But that just isn't the case. Wow.